Hi and welcome back. A while ago I showed you this Alpha Server 1000 and got it working. There's two varieties of this. There's the rack mount version, which is what this one is, and there's the pedestal version. The pedestal version is wider and it's got some hot plug discs in the side of it, storage works type discs. Uh, this one is the rack mount version and there's no storage available apart from internal drives. So what I have done is got one of these which is a BA 356 expansion cabinet. And this allows you to plug in up to seven drives in these storage works bricks. Now when I ordered this it came as the bare enclosure so it came just as you see it now. No power supply and no controller module. It can take power supplies in here, up to two power supplies. And then there's a, what they call a personality module that goes in this slot, which determines what SCSI protocols the thing will talk. So just recently I managed to get the parts to get this thing working. So this is the power supply that is required. And like all the other things, it's one of these storage works bricks, but this is for power. Now this will take either one or two power supplies. So you can put a hard drive in this next slot, or you can put a second power supply. So you've got a redundant power supply solution. The other thing that is required is what they call a personality module, which is one of these. This one is an 8-bit personality module. So you've got your standard high density 50 pin connectors there. Now this module has got two SCSI connectors on it. There's an A and a B. This can operate in one of two modes. It can operate in a single bus mode or a split bus mode. When it's in the split bus mode, the A connector will connect to SCSI IDs 0, 2, 4, 6 and socket B will connect to SCSIs 1, 3 and 5. There's a terminator and a jumper on the back of the, the enclosure and if you change that then you can make it so that A will go to all the SCSI discs 0 through to 6 and then you can chain onto another enclosure out of the B connector. If you leave the cable off here it automatically terminates inside. This goes in this top slot Around the back of the enclosure we've got a couple of fans. These can be removed so that you can get access to the back of the back lane. Okay, in the back we've got two modules that plug in. Module one is just a spot for parking the modules. So it doesn't actually do anything, it's just a place to put the spare module. This is the terminator module. Um, when you've got it in dual bus mode, this terminates each of the two buses. This other one, over here, is what they call a jumper, and that connects those two buses, the 0246 and the 135 together, so that you can see all the devices on the one bus. So this is the slot that matters, the slot 6. So sometimes you'll find that parked there. So if you want a single bus mode, you plug that one in there and you just put the terminator into the into slot one which is just like a placeholder so you don't lose it. So in our case we're going to put it into single bus mode so we put the jumper in number one and then there's this cover plate that goes over the top of that. This is one of the fans, just a standard squirrel cage fan and goes into a plug here that just plugs straight into the back plane. Okay so we've got the personality module plugged in now over here uh, these two indicators just indicate if there's a fan failure, so they're normally off. Um, I'll plug some discs in, but I'm only going to run one power supply so we can get the maximum of seven discs in. To get these out, you squeeze on these tabs and pull them out. But I've got a special tool here that can grab onto these tabs. Line them up 
and then you just squeeze on that and you can pull the device out. Easy. I've got a mixture of discs here. This is the older style RZ26, which matches the power supply. These are all 9 gig or larger discs. Some of them are narrow, like these ones. They're wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. Because it's got the 8-bit controller, it only uses the 8 bits. It doesn't care about the wides. So you can put any drives in you like, and it still works fine. Anyway, let's power it up. Okay, got the VMS running here now. Let's have a look. And there are the discs. DKB 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So all our drives are there. I've got it plugged into a second SCSI card rather than the internal one. That's why it's showing up as DKB and not DKA. These have all got strange labels, so I've been playing with them in the past. So there you have it, an alpha server with lots of storage. I'm currently doing a backup onto this one at the moment, that's why the light's flashing away. These are all 9 gig discs. Uh, I do have some 18s. I think you can get 36s in that form factor as well. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting, and we'll catch up with you next time.